so here is the R Studio window, and this is what we'll be using to do a lot of the development for this class. So I wanted to take a little bit extra time in this first session to kind of go over some of the components. Future sessions, I'll be more just giving you like scripts and kind of have it telling you how they work and kind of explaining them. But this one will be broken down to a couple parts so that we can kind of discuss how R Studio and R works, right? Uh, so you know, a quick note: R is a basically a a, a statistical software programming language, right? Uh, it's essentially written for stats, right? Um, and so uh, some of the stuff, if you're familiar with like regular traditional programming languages like a Python or something like that, might seem a little unusual, but it works very well for doing statistical analysis. And so from that perspective, I think it's very appropriate for what we're beginning talking in this class um, right now. So um, first thing I want to mention is you'll notice that there's these... Um, three little panes, right? And this is something that our studio gives you. And it's something that, you know, there's two packages, right? There's the underlying base R package and there's our studio, which sits on top of it. And part of the reason why I use our studio for this class is that it looks uniform across Macs, PCs, and, and Unix boxes, right? Linux boxes. Um, actually, the R, the basic R in Mac is pretty nice, but, you know, and it has a lot of the same features that our studio does, but, you know, this allows us to kind of have a uniform experience for everybody, right? Um, so, anyways, what do these different panes represent within the RStudio framework? Well, this is the console, right? And this is where you can kind of enter in a lot of the stuff you want to do, and you can kind of basically try out the program. It's the main interface that you're going to use to interact with R, right? Um, in addition to the console, right, you can actually create a what's called a script. So if you go to file, new file, R script, you can create an R script, right? And this is where if you find some commands or find a program you really like, this is where you would actually record the, um, the actual program. And so I'm gonna open this window because we're almost always going to be using the R script. If you write something in the console and you get some great results, that's awesome, but there's no way to actually repeat anything from it. So you need the, R, the script there so you have that content available. The other thing we'll talk about a little bit is the um, environment. So the environment is over here. The environment contains any of the variables you've created. And, you know, I don't want to, um, I don't want to get too far ahead of us, but let's just create a variable and you don't have to do this. And I'll blow up these graphics when I start doing this. But you can see I created a variable called X and I gave it the value of 10, right? Um, and it shows up in the environment, right? Now, Besides the environment and besides the console, if you click over here, you also see the history, and the history contains any command you've executed in the environment. So if I do x times x, right, x times x, I was actually clicking up in the history, so put in the search field, right, I can get a result. So let's see, done, so it gets rid of it there. Now, so now you see x equal to 10, x times x. Now, I didn't store that anywhere, but it did print out to the console 100, right? Um, so besides the environment and the history, we also have all the files. So this kind of, you can use this to quickly get access to wherever your data files are or anything along those lines. Um, and then if you were to plot something, that would also show up here. So um, just to quickly show you, I can do plot 1 colon 10, comma 1 colon 10, right? And this is just going to plot, plot the numbers 1 through 10 against each other, right? So that kind of is a quick description of what's the different panes are to kind of give you some uh, and there's some more detailed panes in here there is the packages right which show you what packages are there's the help pane which is very very useful right there is uh, another an additional viewer you can also develop connections to other remote uh, data sets um, and besides the console you can actually access directly the terminal which will allow you to basically talk to the actual file system on your computer, and then you can see any jobs that are running, right? So that's a quick introduction to the panes. Um, now, one of the first things you might want to do, and one of the first things I always do when creating, uh, when working in R, is set my working directory. And the reason why I want to do that is because I want to save and retrieve all the files from one location, right? Um, so I always kind of forget how to do this, so I always go over here uh, to the help window, and I can type in working directory, right? And I can get a result, and it says, you know, the basic get or set is git wd, and I pull that up, and it says the command is git wd, right? So 
I can actually find out what the current working directory is by typing git wd and the parentheses and hitting enter and it says it's slash user slash bill rand, right? So what if I wanna set that directory? Well, then I could type in set working directory slash users slash bill rand and then I could go into, for instance, in my case, and this is where having the files helps, I wanna go into my Google Drive. So actually, I actually wanna put these in quotes. So I can say slash user slash bill rand slash Google Drive. If I go to Google Drive and I can see I have my classes folder. Oh, went too far, right? So I can go to classes and then I can go into AI, right, this class, right? And so I can say slash AI, right? And that will now set my working directory there. So for instance, if I want to, and this is getting a little advanced, but if I want to save the plot, and I do save as image, right? It's gonna save it directly, you can see right here, directly into that directory. So I can just hit save and there it goes away into that directory. If I go back to the files, you'll now see there's an R plot there that has it in it, right? So it seems might seem a little bit of a detail, but you know one of the first things I always think it's important to do right when you get started is make sure you have that directory set appropriately so you can then put content into it. Um, so in the next uh, video, I'm going to start talking a little bit about how to actually get content that's useful, right? Setting up the variables and things like that. Okay.